With free next day delivery from Staples, you can run your business like a pro. You can guarantee the marketing department that they'll get their supplies tomorrow and guarantee the accounting department that they'll be delivered free. With free next day delivery, you'll have the ability to move deadlines up and adjust budgets down. Go to staples.com and get the office essentials you need delivered next day for free. Staples, it's pro time. Orders over $49.99, placed by 5 p.m. Excludes weekends and holidays. Eligible items only.
today, the 11th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2017. You can call us in right now at 929-477-3997. Again, beloved, that is 929-477-3997. Now, if you live outside of the continental United States of America, you can call us in right now at 1-929-477-3997. Again, beloved, that is one, the 929-477-3997. We are nationally syndicated throughout the United States of America, Canada, uh, including uh, throughout Latin America, throughout the Caribbean islands, and around the world in 150 nations, uh, through the world-renowned Talk America Radio Network out of Dallas, Texas. Now, beloved, the Talk America Radio Network is the new dominant force in conservative talk radio. You can listen to us each and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on talkamericaradio.us forward slash global spiritual revolution radio. Again, beloved, that is talkamericaradio.us forward slash global spiritual revolution radio. Again, we are the new dominant force in conservative talk Radio. All right, we are excited on this August the 11th, uh, 2017, and I'm been wait. I've been personally waiting on this broadcast um, for some time now, and this is a clearing call in response to a global clearing call from a lot of you uh, of our global spiritual revolution partners around the world uh, that you have been. Um, begging me and writing and and begging me again to get Dr. Clarence A. Mason back. And I've got some great news for you tonight, beloved. Uh, we have the world-renowned Dr. Clarence A. Mason um, all the way from St. Louis, Missouri. He is one of the most powerful um, thinkers and conservative voices and leaders not only in the United States of America, but around the world. You can go to his website right now at www.clarenceamason.com. Again, beloved, that is clarenceamason.com. And I'm telling you, he is one of the most powerful um, conservative writers in America and around the world. Some of his writings have been on tribalism, on truth, right between the lies. It's okay to leave the plantation. Uh, Remember several months ago, we had Dr. Mason on, we talked about uh, that title, uh, that it's okay to leave the plantation, the death uh, of the democratic plantation. That is one of my favorite books. And also Diamond in the Rough, 10 Carrots to Success. And the follow-up of that book, Polishing the Diamond in the Rough, Success is natural. You can go onto his website, clearanceamason.com. Again, beloved, that is clearanceamason.com. You can purchase all of his books, his DVDs, CDs, all of his teachings, and also you can go on amazonbooks.com forward slash Clarence Mason Weaver. Again, that's amazon.com forward slash Clarence Mason Weaver. Uh, and you can buy any and all of his books in materials. And I guarantee you, your life and your way of thinking will never be the same again. 929-477-3997. Again, beloved, that is 929-477-3997. I thank God for all of our global spiritual revolution uh, revolution partners from around the world. Amen. And it looks like we have brand new global spiritual revolution partners uh, all the way from San Diego, Chile, we have brand new um, Global Spiritual Revolution partners who are listening to us online from San Diego, Chile. Uh, welcome to the global movement of Global Spiritual uh, Revolution Radio. Also, we have um, brand new revolution partners uh, out of Singapore City in Singapore. They're in Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio, and we also have brand new Global Spiritual Revolution partners out of Seoul, South Korea. Welcome back to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio, and it looks like we have a Global Spiritual Revolution partner and listener for the very first time out of the capital city and nation 
of Sofia, Bulgaria. Welcome to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And we also have revolution partners out of Bombay, uh, India, uh, New Delhi, India, and also out of the nation of Sri Lanka. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule uh, this evening, or if you're uh, across the world, depending upon your time zone, whether it is morning, noon, or night, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule um, to be with us here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And also, it looks like we have um, uh, a company of priests, praise God, a Catholic priest. Uh, I can't recall when the last time that we had any Catholic priests to tune in to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. But uh, we have a group of Catholic priests who are listening online uh, to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio out of St. Peter Port, Guernsey. Oh, praise God. That is uh, near the United Kingdom uh, in and around about England. Thank you so much for those those of you men of God, those priests in St. Peter Port in Guernsey near between Scotland and uh, Great Britain. Thank you so much for listening and for tuning in tonight to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And last but never least, I want to acknowledge uh, brand new Global Spiritual Revolution partners out of Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, Thank you for joining the international movement of Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. All right, Dr. Weaver, thank you so much, sir, for being back with us tonight on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. It is my pleasure, sir. How are you guys doing? Oh, doing great, sir. I'm telling you, a lot of our partners worldwide have been begging and begging me and uh, to get you back. And man of God, we are so very honored uh, to have you back with us here in our studios here in the great state of New York and to talk about the power of forgiveness. And again, thank you, Dr. Weaver, for just being with us tonight. And I'm telling our Global Spiritual Revolution partners Out of all the guests we've had, uh, Dr. Clarence Mason Weaver uh, is my spiritual father. He is my, not just my spiritual father, but my spiritual mentor, uh, someone who has been blessed with uh, a wealth of wisdom and a wealth of knowledge. And before we get into the uh, furtherance of the broadcast, man of God, can you lead us into the mind of God in prayer uh, in Jesus' mighty name? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege, the honor to gather before you. We thank you for giving us knowledge of who you are. We thank you Mm -hmm. for loving us enough to cover us with your blood and to redeem us back to you. We pledge, dear Heavenly Father, to stand for you in the face of darkness, to glorify your name in everything we do, to, to have our steps ordered by you. We pledge to you, our dear God, that we will not disappoint you. We will, in fact, disappoint man. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we thank you as we go forth to conquer in your holy name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Weaver. 929-477-3997. Again, quickly, 929-477-3997. And the board is lighting up. We have uh, Global Revolution Partners now in more than 165 countries listening online right now. The power of forgiveness. Uh, man of God, can you share with us and to our, uh, not just to, to me and to my staff and production team here, uh, but also to our global spiritual revolution partners around the world uh, concerning the power of forgiveness. What is forgiveness? And share with us your testimony, how the Lord blessed you in that endeavor. You know, I appreciate it. Uh, Bishop, you, you started the program off by talking about the, the amount of wisdom that God has bestowed upon me. And that wisdom came from dragging me through the mud, the bricks, the glass, the rocks. Yes, uh, wisdom comes by knock, knock on your heads. And I certainly had that. I was born in St. Louis, in the inner city, poor parents. My father, my grandfather was a pastor. I grew up in the parts of the church. I knew all about the God thing. I saw pastors coming and going. Uh, my mother married another man, a pastor, we moved out of St. Louis into the deep, deep, deep country. So far deep, there's a pump in daylight. And <laughs> I'm, I'm out there in, in, in the country, uh, went from all black school to all white school. Uh, yes, sir. I was able to succeed and thrive in sports and academics. I was able to graduate as a junior, and they refused to let me graduate. The guidance counselor said that all I would do is take a seat from a more deserving white kid 
and that if if he liked, I can he could go down to the shoe factory and see if he get me a job with the other colored boys. And mm. I, I didn't need to go to college with a black man. I ignored him. Um, a week later, I heard the coach, the basketball coach, talking about the upcoming season. And, he was not going to start me because he did not want me to get a scholarship from any of the white kids. So I announced to the coach, you don't have to worry about me. I'm leaving the school. I'm going to quit school. Even though I was eligible to graduate as a junior, I quit school as a junior, and I joined the Navy on the same day Dr. King was murdered, April 4, mm. 1968. I went to the military, went to Vietnam, then I get a scratch on me. Deal with racism in a very, very rare occasions. I, I never really spent a whole lot of racism. But on August the 11th, 1971, I ordered a white racist shipmate to help me move 2,800 pounds of steel, me, him, another, another black guy. And I turned and watched him. I looked him in the eye. When he put his shoulders to it, and with all his might, pushed that steel over on me, trying to kill me. Mm. I turned toward him to run out the way. It hit me on my left hip, uh, crushed me against that steel wall, and crushed my hips in. Broke my pelvis in eight places, uh, threw my back off, my spine was off 15 degrees, uh, ruptured my spleen and my bladder and broke three ribs, and I crushed my helmet into the, into the steel wall, and my knees collapsed from the weight on me. Uh, I, I screamed in pain, opened my eyes up, and looked at this white racist dog. And the look on his face, I've never seen another man look at a human being that way before. I immediately stopped screaming. Because I'm saying, you're not going to gonna see me die and scream at the same time. I'm not going to die, but die looking in your eye. And he ran away. The black guy behind me got off under his steel and went and got uh, folks to rescue me. But it, it no longer mattered. It did not matter. <laughs> I was done with America. I was done with white people. I was done with trying to be uh, coercive to them. I was done trying to be polite to them. I was done. I was angry. I'm now disabled. I'm now not unable to, to, to do my career as a high steam nuclear welder. Uh, I was done, and I went to, I got discharged, a medical discharge. I went to Berkeley. I ran with the Black Panther Party. I ran with the, I went to school at the college that founded the Black Panther Party. I was taught sociology by Melvin Newton, Huey Newton's older brother, and I went to Berkeley, radical student at UC Berkeley, and I spoke Swahili, and I took black history, and I was evil and mean and dangerous. I hated America and everything white. I even broke up with a young lady once. My girlfriend, because she had a white dog. How dare her get a white dog in my presence? Uh, you know, I, I hate it. I hate it to a point that I will wake up in the morning. I wake up every morning with my jaws numb with being clenched all night. Mm. I wanted one thing only in life. I wanted to find that white boy and put my, my hands around his throat and squeeze that look off his face. Mm. I, I, went to, I went to Cal Berkeley, 35,000 students, most of them white. I did not know one white student's name on that campus. I was a dangerous, evil, mean-spirited young man. And uh, I, I knew who God was. I didn't care. I, I knew who Jesus was. I did not care. Uh, I felt justified. I had to sit up all night. I couldn't sleep. Couldn't lay in my bed. Uh, I had to sleep with my knees down, my, my head in the pillow, my behind up in the air. So I sat up on the couch all night and put pillows on my back to stay right. And all I did was read. I couldn't, in those days, TV went up at midnight. So I read all night. And I mm. read those school books I had to buy. And I was, sometimes at Berkeley, you, you get 30 books a class at Berkeley. And, and mm. I was taking double courses. And I, and, and I turned around and realized one day I was ready to graduate Berkeley after two and a half years with four college degrees. And so I said, okay, I got a brain. I don't have a back anymore, but I got a brain. And I, <laughs> My militancy, I'm, I'm, but what happened to me? Finally, my, my mother said I had a spiritual heart transplant. I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to figure out slavery. I'm looking for black history. I'm taking black history. I speak Swahili, and I'm taking my history, and I'm studying the Jews. And I realized that the people of God never went into captivity while they're worshiping God. And they never came out of captivity until they stopped doing what they were doing and began to worship God. I saw black folks in America came here. After worshiping all kind of fake gods in Africa, came here and started picking up those Negro spirituals and singing the name of the Lord. And the <laughs> evidence movement began, the Christian movement began, and black folks walked out of slavery praising God. I realized that my freedom must depend on how I worship my God. And I'm studying scripture, studying, trying to find out the answer to this 
thing I had in my heart. I, I didn't have God. It was an emptiness. I didn't know, Bishop, that if you seek, you shall find. I had mm-hmm. heard it before. I didn't understand it. And one day, driving up from, from San Diego to Oakland, middle of the night, 3 o'clock in the night, uh, I wasn't even supposed to drive. I could not move my leg. I had to pick my leg up by the parents' leg and put him in the car. If I had to mm-hmm. go off from the brakes to the gas, I had to pick my feet off the brake over to the gas with my hand. I had to lift my legs up and bring them over to the brakes and stop the car. I, I'm driving. I stopped. I began to understand Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe, came yes. to earth just for me, personally, by name. Yes. He, he suffered for man just for me. He allowed himself to be beaten, thinking about me. He wanted to redeem me back to him so much, he allowed his precious body to be cut and nailed to the cross, and the thorns on his flesh tore him apart mm. just for me. When I realized that, that God Almighty went into hell on my behalf to proclaim victory to those waiting for him to come back and came out leading them, when I realized that God Almighty went to heaven to prepare a place for me and would come back to me and call me by name out of my grave, when I realized that Jesus Christ did not compromise That's right. with me on that cross, I knew I could not compromise with him mm. on earth. Thank you. Lord. And I was I was changed instantly. It felt like a warm bucket of oil flew over me. Mm. I remember stopping to get gas and got back in my car to get gas and drove off on the freeway. And before I realized, I had not had to take my leg by my pants leg to put on the gas. I got off the car, I had walked perfectly to the gas station, came back in, got in my car, oh. and drove off with no pain because I didn't. I had forgotten about it. Now I started reading the Bible. I'm still I'm still pretty dangerous. And mm-hmm. I started reading scripture. <laughs> For the five thousandth time I read the scripture. I've read it all my life. All yes, my sir. life I'm in church, I read the scripture. All my life I'm reading Jesus telling the disciples how to pray. And yes. he said, Forgive your trespassers. Yes. And he said it and then he went back. Apparently there was something so important about uh, uh verse twelve and forgive us our debts and we forgive our debtors. He, he went back, and he, and he covered only one verse. He said in verse 14 of Matthew 7, I mean Matthew 6, he said, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Yes. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. And brother, Bishop, hmm. I had a whole lot to be forgiven for. <laughs> so I, I said, you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me I got to forgive that white racist that tried to kill me? You mean to mm. tell me I have to forgive that guy that took away my energy, my strength? I've been in pain now. Today is the 47th anniversary of this injury. I've been wow. in pain twice as long mm. in my life than I've been without the pain. You mean I got to forgive this guy? I got to. I had pledged to kill him if I ever laid eyes on him. I didn't care what he was, bitch. He could have been in front of the police department giving a speech. I was going to go to jail. <laughs> I had to forgive him. Yes, sir. And when I forgave him, when I forgave him on that freeway, when I said, mm. I'm, not, I'm not the person you got to apologize for. I'm not the person you got to, to make amends with. I don't belong to me. I belong to Jesus Christ. You got a yes. problem with Jesus Christ. Come on, sir. When I forgave him, God healed me. Not just physically, not just even spiritually. He healed me mentally. I went back to Oakland, walked into my girlfriend's house, and told her, you got to either change your last name or change your address. <laughs> Come on, you sir. You can't stay here because God has a woman for me. If it's not you, you're in the way of me finding her. If mm. it is you... I got to accept you God's way by giving you the most precious, valuable thing I have, my last name. Mm. You got to play me or trade me. And all my Milton <laughs> friends, all my Milton yeah. friends thought, I mean, I changed overnight, Bishop. I changed in, in a two-hour drive home. Yes, sir. And and all my friends thought something was wrong with me. All my political rivals, I'm now joining, thought I was tricking them. And right. what God did was clear my mind up. He took that anger out. I was able to have a 32-year marriage to this woman. We got grandkids yeah. around the house. You probably hear making noise in the background. Uh, he gave me a business that I didn't need a back for. I needed a mm. brain for. Uh, yes, he sir. gave me friends. We traveled the world. 
He has allowed me to praise his name all over this planet, and that's all I do. I open my box up and tell you the truth and go home. God is a God of forgiveness. <laughs> now, if you look at black folks, if you look at the problems we have, we keep saying the white man done me wrong and the white man right. owed me. If we forgave, if yeah. we forgave the harm, real or imagined, if we forgave it and depended on God to take care of us, God will raise us up a mighty nation. But we're yes, still sir. blaming and scraping and hollering and shooting and fussing and cussing. And all God requires us to do is take right. our problems to him, lay them at the cross, and leave them at the cross and act like we believe God. And that's my testimony. You cannot tell me God don't do miracles. I'm a walking miracle. They gave me a week to live, brother. It's been 47 years. Mm. Mm. So I'm mm. telling you, God will, if you, if you honor God with your belief, with your belief, and you act like you believe the word of God, the word of God will act like he believes you. And you cannot outgive God. Mm. Mm. And, and they say, uh, uh, man of God, that the, the terminology forgiveness uh, is the intentional and voluntary process by which a victim undergoes a change in feelings, attitude, and behavior regarding his or her offense. They let go of the negative emotions, which oftentimes causes emotional warfare. And I think that's... All the time. And you hit it right on the button, man of God, is that black folk, African Americans, are so bitter. They blaming white folk. They, they, they blaming um, the Chinese. They blame, blame, blame. And they're carrying around all of this bitterness and resentment and hateful. Now, a lot of them are dying of cancers and leukemias yes. and yes. sickle cell because of the spirit of unforgiveness. Look, look, at, the, look at the world. Yeah. You know, my grandfather fought the German in World yes. War I, and he drove a German truck. You know? I mean, mm. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> I, I, I mean we fought Japan. We, we destroyed Asia. And okay. now we're training with Japan and China. We <laughs> right. destroy Europe. And we mm-hmm. rebuilt it, and we're training with Italy and Germany now. We will fight to the death for our nations, and then we forgive them the next year. That's our training. See? Folks, slavery has been over a long time. And I don't mm. care what they owe you. They will never give you much as you can earn from them by competing against them. It's time mm-hmm. we stop acting like we're begging children. And so taking our rightful place here, raising our kids to compete, and becoming fathers to our sons and daughters, and try, uh, stop trying to blame the world for you being right. too lazy, too scared, or too inferior to go out and compete. Come on, Doc. That's it. That's it. And, and, and you got the Black Lives Matter movement. I guarantee you, Dr. <laughs> Weaver, if you ask them why they are marching, 95% of them won't even tell you the reason why they are marching. They're being used. It makes yep. no sense. It, they, it, it they have. Um, no I, I call it Black Lives Matter. Um, yeah. I had the, I had the distrust once of being on on. Um, I guess it was um, Fox and Friends, with the yes. founder of Black Lives Matter, and um, yes. I told them drive it up, that it was not going to be nice. Uh, I, I I don't respect this woman. I have no courtesy for her. Uh, she's right. a fellow warrior. You put her on on a camera with me. I will not respect her her womanhood. And we got on the air, and I told her, Paul Black, I don't mm. have any respect for a woman who hates her own race so much. She demands the white folks take care of her babies. Mm. How dare you even be on the same program with me? How dare you even be breathing mm. the same air I am? You hate yourself. You think white folks are superior. Yeah. Any problem you have, you demand white folks take care for you. You are an right. embarrassment to womanhood. Mm. Oh, Stop my God. We, folks, everything black folks think we can do think mm. we can do. We dominate. In mm. spite of white folks not liking it. We dominate NBA, NFL, NBA, right. you know, we dominate baseball, track and field, pimping okay. women, selling dope. We dominate rap. <laughs> we dominate everything we <laughs> think we can do. Why can't we think we can own a business and raise a family? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Thinking. Thinking. Oh my God. They, 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 black folks can't think. If you think, you can't be a liberal. You gotta feel. Mm. You gotta feel. You can't think. If you think for a second, it's over. You're free. Ooh. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, 
and I heard heard recently, Doctor Weaver, and we're talking about the power of forgiveness, uh, and, and with this world run, and he's not even a guest on, on no more. I, I believe this great man of God uh, is a part of the global spiritual revolution uh, movement here in New York. Nine two nine four seven seven three nine nine seven. I just heard recently, Doctor Weaver, that some of the founding members of the Black Lives Matter movement are lesbians. Oh yes, you know that. Oh yes, they they that. hate men. They don't like yeah. men, and they've been funded by these other leftist socialist groups to keep black folks upset. But they are the lady I was on on the TV was the lesbian. As I said, I, I was embarrassed. She don't like black men. She believes black men are inferior to white men, and she's trying right. to cut down the black man. I, I just told her you're on TV with a real black man. Glad to meet Come you. Come on now, Doc. Yes, yes, and and, and just. This, you know, they blame us as black conservatives of the, of hating ourselves, but in actuality, uh, man of God, they hate themselves. Oh yes, sir. Am I correct in saying this? Yes, sir. Uh, Bishop, wh- whatever they call you, they call you what they are. Yes. See, God mm-hmm. does not allow them to actually lie to you. They mm-hmm. tell you the truth. They tell you what they think of themselves. They tell mm-hmm. you what they think of you. They tell you what's in their heart, but they disguise it in an attack mm-hmm. on you. When they call you mean and intolerant, it's because they're mean and intolerant. When they call you uh, closed-minded, because they are closed-minded. When they say yes. hate speech, they're saying hate speech. They, they mirror themselves when they attack you. So when they attack you, you have to consider that glory because they are describing mm-hmm. themselves to the world. If you got ears to hear, you will understand exactly <laughs> what they're saying. We have Dr. Clarence uh, A. Mason, a man, Dr. Uh, Clarence Mason Weaver, world-renowned uh, psychologist, world-renowned author, a man, speaker, mentor, and to thousands, hundreds of thousands of not just black men, but men, period, and uh, the publisher of some of the most powerful books I have ever read here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio in Media Group out of New York City, New York, 929-477-3997. Again, beloved, that's 929-477-3997. And it looks like we're having a lot of callers, um, uh, amen, out west from Los Angeles, amen. Um, it looks like from Las Vegas, Nevada, Seattle, Washington, thank you for joining Global Spiritual Revolution Radio tonight. Uh, Dr. Weaver is imparting into us uh, instructing us, not just as black conservative, conservative men, but as just men, period, and people, the power of forgiveness here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And man, I got with your permission, can I share just one scripture as you were talking about forgiveness? Uh, in John chapter 20, verse 23, Jesus said, for whosoever sins ye remit or forgive, they are remitted are forgiven unto them, and whoso and whosoever sins ye retain, or you don't forgive, they are retained. And in other words, what Jesus Christ was actually teaching, uh, in order for me to be healed of my sickness, or if I have a disease, I've got to forgive my brother or sister, because not only does that release me, but that releases them. Am I correct in saying that, sir? Absolutely. Uh, wow. You are required by God. You cannot outgive God, and you cannot outforgive God. Uh, mm. but you have to be a spiritual creature. I like that. You are. You are not. You no longer belong to yourself. You don't own yourself. So if someone mm. attacks my car and beats my car in, that's yes. my car. My car ain't got to get revenge. My car ain't got to go take care of that. I'm gonna take care of that. And so mm-hmm. you are. You are, you're saying you are a slave to Christ. You are not your own. You belong to Christ. Let God handle that. What you're saying, you go out and get revenge. You say, God can't handle that. I got that for you, God. You can't handle this. Yeah. Um. And and then I realized something with that that guy. As I got mature spiritually, I realized that guy did not do anything to me. I mean, God revealed to me clearly. I was was a powerful speaker in those days. I was a single man. I went from home, got my own apartment, Mm -hmm. my own car. And I was too yes. busy chasing the streets, and God kept tapping me on my shoulder. I got something mm. for you to do. I'm too busy. I gotta go do this right now. I take it that later on. I gotta go. I got, I got this new car. I gotta drive. I gotta go do this. I'm on my way to San Francisco. That that day, I was supposed to be on vacation. I was on leave. Yes, sir. I had to go run to San Francisco for the weekend and do some stuff. 
and God dropped 2,800 pounds on me. I laid in the hospital at Bellborn Naval Hospital. All I could do was look up. I couldn't speak. I couldn't hardly breathe. I couldn't move. I had to. I was wrapped up. I would look at the ceiling. I could not do nothing. My voice, my vocal cords hurt my back. I had to whisper. Mm. And then God said to me, you got a minute now? Can we talk? <laughs> Anything you want to do there? Come on, Doc. What's your schedule the next couple, a couple of weeks? What you got to do? <laughs> let, let me talk to you now. Let me, <laughs> right. Yeah, got to do, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I had, I couldn't, I lost all body functions, but I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't swallow. I couldn't right. do nothing. But lay up there and maybe peer down my body at my toes. See, they're still yes. moving. See, mm. God had to put me down because I wasn't sitting still listening. Mm. I wasn't sitting still. And when I finally realized that and sat still and let my father talk to me, uh, and, and be willing to respond to a certain situation wherever they come up. See, if mm-hmm. you're going to be responding to a certain situation wherever they come up, God will, st- will send those situations to you. He needs right. a person to respond to it. He, he's going to send things to me. It came back to me for people I used to hang with, the militants, the haters, the black pastors, the, student, the, the right. uh, United Student Union, all those clowns. They, kept, they knew me. They kept coming to me and coming to me. Mm-hmm. What they got for me was just wisdom. You want to see mm-hmm. You want succeed. You want success, real success. You want you want to, you want to take care of your family. You want to be prosperous. You want to control your life. You get on your knees first. Yes. And empty that emptiness out of you. You ask God to. You lift up both hands and ask God to pour into you. Yes, sir. Manhood. You want manhood. You let you yes. ask God to pour into you and you ask God to give you a challenge. Give me mm-hmm. something to conquer, not whine and protest. To conquer. <laughs> You want a real job, black man? Get a wife. That's a real job. <laughs> huh? Tell me I'm wrong. Come on, Doc. Teach. That's a work. That's, <laughs> that's work. <laughs> you want to you wanna conquer something. Conquer a woman. Go, I, oh, I come on, Doc. Teach. <laughs> so what happened, I, I got old friends now who, who saw my response. See? They saw my challenge. You say you're a warrior. You don't have uh, a warrior by protests in the streets. No, you're a right. warrior by praying in the streets. Mm. If you're a warrior, mm. the world the world don't hate a protester. Right. The world hates a Christian activist. Mm. They'll oh, throw a rock at somebody praying in the corner, but they won't throw nobody hold over <laughs> the fist up, clenching their honor them. They're, they're yeah. scared of them. You, you be a Christian proclaiming God's mercy on this city. Look what happened right. in North Carolina. That dude went in that in that church and shot up. He he reloaded twice, at least twice. We right. killed those nine people. My and Lord. they came up the next day and said, we forgive him. Look at that. That was the only city that never had a riot. They didn't have one person get shot, one person get killed, one person had their store burned down. Nothing happened. The power of forgiveness. In Baltimore, they riot. In Ferguson, they riot. In L.A., they riot. In Dallas, they riot. In that little yeah. city in North Carolina, everybody went home. Peace came upon See? them. Mm. Forgive and, 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 and some of the biggest slave owners today are black uh, liberals of, of the black bourgeoisie of the left. Am I correct? And in don't, this? don't forget them unsaved black preachers. Don't forget them now. A couple of teach on that. You, know, on you that. know what they are. You know them. I know. You know Puka <laughs> Ray Ray and Reverend, Reverend Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> They're number yeah. pimps. And they that's, were all pimps. They, that's all they are. Yes. They like that, like that, that's that, that idiot in North. Man, I wrote a column about that fool in North Carolina talking about praying, holding hands on Trump was heresy. I oh. wrote an article. I talked about that dude like he was a stepchild at family reunion. He go, he go, he gonna say it's heresy to lay your hands. I said if you, if he's your enemy, you are supposed to pray for him. Right. And he said you shouldn't. I said, man, you know that's the problem. Black folks being misled by these wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm. These poverty pimps. Come on now. I mean, a person name. who makes money, who, who got rich while you were poor, won't yes. keep you poor. That's it. B- Barack Obama did not become a millionaire t- until George Bush got in office. Mm. He made oh, his come. money under Bush and then made, made mm. all his money as president. They are making their money off of people. The, the liberals <laughs> want you to think that you are required to pay health insurance for somebody else. So what they're right. saying to you is that all your hard work, 
the money you earn, mm. you are not entitled to. But somebody else who has not worked for your money is entitled to your money. They're saying you <clears throat> have no right to your money, but they do to your money. They're saying you are their slaves. See, we mm. think that poverty is royalty. They think that poverty yeah. is royalty. They say, I need more food. Give me food. I need more <laughs> rights. I need better housing. What's up, Sway? They think that what? being poor makes them royalty. Right. Well, you're a royal fool. I give you nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm telling you, uh, we have Dr. Clarence A. Mason. Uh, we have a world-renowned author, uh, mentor, psychologist, uh, black conservative scholar here tonight on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Continue to send those emails in, and, and we're probably going to have to send a lot of these to Dr. Mason and to his staff. So many people have questions, but this victim psychology uh, is, it, that black folk are carrying is the root of this victim psychology rooted in the lack of forgiveness. Am, am I correct in saying yes, that, sir? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Because we're still blaming white folks for slavery. Something we're not forgiving something. We are still, we blame, look, I mean, we send our kids to these inner city gang prep schools. Right. And we complain that our kids grow up to be gang members. Mm. Uh, schools in Camden, New Jersey, they're, they're paying $25,000 per student per year. Oh, my God. To keep these kids in school. That means $100,000 they're paying for your higher school education. And over 50% mm. of those kids are dropouts. Why don't you just give those kids $100,000 off at 18? Right. They're going to business. Come on, so Doc. They don't learn anything. They're educated, not motivated. You spend $100,000 per student. But what you're spending that money on is union dues. And student racial, <laughs> you put it on union groups, socialist groups, liberal groups, to feed nonsense. Your kids don't even, can't even read the diploma they get. Mm. 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 A class of 30 is, what, $600,000 a year. Right. And, uh, and, the, and the local private school on the street spending half that amount of money, and 19% of the kids are going to college, and the kids are learning how to deal with this world out here. If, if you give me your children, and give right. me 40% of your taxes to raise your children. I mean, I love children, but I will not love yours more than I love mine. And I will oh, raise man. your kids to work for my kids. Ooh. That's oh, right. That's called human nature. That's we a, surrender a, our children oh, to the slave yeah. master to raise. He's going to raise your kids to pick yeah. his kids' cotton. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> You're teaching, Doc. That's it. And it was uh, there was a stat that came out like a month and a half ago, uh, Dr. Weaver, that in 2016, black America, I'm not talking about any of the ethnicity in this country, black Americans, black folk alone spent $2.5 billion on Air Jordan sneakers. Does that make any sense? Oh. It makes no sense. $2.5 billion hey. and Michael Jordan would never come in the black community. What would never. happen? What yeah. would happen if they spent two point two billion dollars in Nike stock? Oh my. Oh. What would happen? What would, what would happen if the churches what would happen if the churches announced on Sunday morning? Um no more tithes. Uh, come on tithes. now. I, I have a brother <laughs> Joseph over here has an assurance company. Yes. And, and I want you all to take out a million dollars insurance mm. and, and donate half of that to the church and half to your family. So every black church, even a small black church, four people yes. die, you got two million bucks. Mm. What would happen to that church? What would happen to that community? What would happen to the school system that church would start? What would, it's, it, we don't invest in ourselves. We just take from ourselves. We don't invest nothing. Mm. We got the biggest black church in St. Louis here. That, that preacher brags. He got a he got a uh, Bentley and a Rolls Royce. He bad. Mm. He, he owns a whole block. Every building on the block he owns. I told Ooh. him, so you're building build businesses or you're building souls. Oh, Where are the men at? They're not in the church. The men on the corner. On your corner in front of church, several their bodies. The men mm. are. Teach so, so you got the buildings. God ain't here to save buildings. Oh he's, my like, God. he's like in the building saving business. 
He's in the soul saving <laughs> business. And what you doing? You spend your money. He has a, this 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 idiot has a standard barrier walking before him in public. Mm. I kid you not. He walk around with a standard barrier, like he's he's, he's royalty. <laughs> 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 This fool. I mean, what? I said, mean, what's your oh, name, man? Lost in space? What are you talking? You don't oh, got a standard bear. You, you, you got, who gave you a flag? You the king here or something? Oh, I mean, Lord have mercy. I grew up on that block. I grew up on that block. And I'm oh, seeing these people, man, surrendering their kids. Over 45%. Of exactly. black pregnancies in an abortion. How can Micah. God bless you? How can God mm-hmm. bless you? If we came out of slavery, we prospered out of slavery. We came out of slavery <laughs> singing those Negro spirituals, praising God. The underground world, world was a Christ centered organization. This is Christ centered. We thrived until it 1934. Might... Yes, sir. 1934, we started turning our back on God. We started bringing the black Muslims in our church and we started yes. bringing them in our community. So now instead of a, co- a church corner, on every corner, you had a Church on one corner, a mosque on another corner, and a liquor store on another corner. And God cannot bless you until you stop and act like you believe He is the only God. That's it. Then He can bless you. I had the privilege of meeting Aristide in Haiti uh, before now. he got overthrown. And he asked me a question. Mm. Uh, I was in his office with him and my wife. And he said, Haiti yes. and America was founded the same decade. Haiti mm. became the poorest country in the hemisphere, and America was the greatest country in the hemisphere. How did it happen? Teach. And I said, Mr. President, you are a trained Jesuit priest. You know what happened. Come on, tell your people what happened. Tell them what happened. Right now you're a politician, Mm. but you're a trained Jesuit priest. When our founding Mm. powers in America won their freedom, they dropped to their knees and thanked God Almighty for their freedom. When your slave revolutionaries defeated Spain and France, they dropped to their knees and they thanked voodoo. You tell me what the problem is in Haiti. Right across the mm-hmm. island is a prosperous nation praising God. On the same mm-hmm. island, the same Heat. dirt, the same climate, yes. they are praising God and prospering. Right here on your island, the average salary is $29 a month because God is waiting on voodoo to take care of you like you Come are. On. Come on, teach. He hung his head. He, hung, he literally hung his head. My he God. knew it was the truth. A year later, he was overthrown, put out of office. Teach. And when that earthquake hit, Haiti, 7.4 earthquake. Mm. That White House collapsed to the ground. Yes. I mean, to dust. And, and the people of God oh, started praising God, gospel singing in the streets of Haiti. I called a bishop. said, well, you got to get those, your folks to Haiti. They got a spiritual revival. But about three what? days later, when we didn't show up, the voodoo priest came out. So I said, you can't bury those folks while the voodoo priest over the, over to the burial. You can't, you can't praise this thing. You got the voodoo priest. And they went back to worship voodoo, and they have not recovered yet. My God. God will wait for you to act like you believe him. I'm telling you, we, we curse on ourselves. Our people, I mean, instead of depending on God, looking to Jesus Christ for their healing, now, they're going to these witch doctors, and you know they're buying these oils, these herbs, yes. you know, yes, sir. Uh, incense. It's, it's, it's all witchcraft. Yeah. The, the power behind that is the power behind every false religion. It is saying basically, you mm. are God. If you get these oils, these spices, these bowls, these fruits, these loops, you can control the weather. Somebody's facility, mm-hmm. emotion, your money. They believe, and it's really them. Every false religion is centered around you. You can control mm. everything. You are God. The same problem Eve had. You'll be like yes. God. It's a dream of man. That's why man wants knowledge. That's why he, he worships science. He thinks knowledge will get him what you're going with. I had a telescientist once on, on the radio. You mm. take pride in being a scientist, but your sci- you, don't, you don't have a science book in your house five years old because it's already outdated with new advice. Mm. My Bible is 6,000 years old. I ain't changing nothing in it. It's Come on now. It. Teach, doctor. That's it. You, you got a book of beliefs that change with the weather. I got a God mm. that's unchanging, unchangeable. Oh, glory. Mm. Oh, I'm on the plane with a physicist. He, he's a very educated man, PhD in physics. He knew everything. The man told me, I can tell you what happened one hundredth of a billionth of a second mm. after the Big Bang. I said, that's impressive, man. That's impressive. 
But what's more impressive, if you can tell me what happened one billion of a second before the Big Bang. Oh, Lord. Come on, Doc. Because whatever that is, that what bang is eternal. <laughs> You're saying it's before time, it's before matter, it's before existence, or whatever exploded, whatever went bang. That is eternal. What went bang? Mm. You can tell me. They couldn't tell. Nobody can tell you that. What went bang? So you said, well, so what went bang is? What do you think went bang? I said, the word <laughs> of God. Yes. Teach That's what went God. bang. Ooh. And you got, and, and, and in our closing minutes, we know you have to go, doctor, but in, especially in the African American community, you got all of these black consciousness people, you know. Um, I, I'm t- I had a guest on, I will not name him over the air. I'll tell you um, when, when, when we talk over the phone. But I, I asked this um, well known black scholar, psychologist, why is the, uh, why are children who are born out of wedlock in the black community at such a higher rate than any other ethnicity? He didn't talk about sin. He didn't talk about taking respons- personal responsibility. He blamed the white man. He blamed the white man. So I, uh, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying that the white man uh, held a gun to his head told the young man to up, uh, uh, zip up or up, unzip his zipper and told the young lady to take off her skirt? No, no, no. I, I disagree with that. And I don't understand why we have black leaders in the black consciousness movement who all said they want to go back to Africa, but they don't realize that the, the name Africa was really not the original name of the continent. It was named after Scipio Africanus. Okay, who had defeated Hannibal in Carthage, which is present-day Libya, and changed the name of the continent to uh, the name of the new slave master, Scipio Africanus. Yeah, and you got these, you got these um, black consciousness guardians telling black folk, "Oh, listen, you can have all the babies you want. You know, the white man wants you to get married. This is this is nonsense. Am I correct in saying this, sir?" It's it's not only nonsense; it's also self-hating. It's also ungodly. You have to not believe in God if you believe in that. You have to shred all evidence of God's existence. You are once again saying that, you know, imagine what 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 would they want? They want once they got everything they wanted, the black yes, God consciousness of yourself. You understand? Mm-hmm. What would that get you? Would that get you to heaven? Why? Knowing who who I mean. The, how about God's consciousness? Ah, how about the consciousness of you being saved? Each how about the consciousness of you being required to take care of your baby? Your manhood is not made in your ability to make babies. A 12 year old kid can make a baby. That, that's a nice, and, and seducing a woman, I got really? news for you, brothers out there. I got news for you guys. They are seducing you. You ain't mm-hmm. never a stud boy. You, are, you ain't seducing, you ain't out talking to these women. You're not being slick. You're not being strong. A 12-year-old boy, a homeless man, has a woman. It ain't your game. It's your shame. It's your shame. So if we, if we decided as black men, you want to be strong, black man. You want to be strong. The, the, uh, you want to be safe. You think that the world hates you and is fearful of going out there. The safest place to be, black man, yes, is sir. in the will of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh. I'm telling you, Doctor. Safest Lee, place to be. Oh, I, I, there is a heavy, heavy anointing to our global spiritual revolution uh, partners around the world. We are so honored. I'm so honored to have uh, not only a spiritual father here and mentor, but also a black conservative father uh, in the person of the Honorable Doctor Clarence A. Mason. Please go to his powerful website uh, right now at Clarence. A Mason.com. Again, that's triple W dot Clarence Mason. Clarence A Mason.com. Again, beloved, that's Clarence A Mason.com. And please invite him to your church, to your college or, or uh, university. Uh, Dr. Uh, this powerful man of God, Dr. Clarence Mason, and I um, were in the process of getting some type of a, a black summit together, a black conservative summit in Washington, D.C. And it looks like we got a lot of listeners 
from the Washington, D.C. area, specifically in the Georgetown area. And all of us, we are so honored uh, tonight, man of God, to have you back. And uh, he is also one of the contributing writers for the world-renowned World Net Daily, one of my favorite uh, media outlets. Uh, the, the World Net Daily, they produce real news. Listen to our Global yep. Spiritual Revolution partners. They produce real news. Okay, not fake news. And we thank God for this great man of God uh, taking time out of his busy schedule. And and you may and let me say this quickly before you go, man of God. And you talk about the black church, and you got these uh, pastors who are poverty temp, pimps or political spiritual pimps. Um, it says that on the average, last year in 2016, uh, the black church in America collectively collected. Uh, almost $700 million. Can you imagine what we could do with that money, man of God? Build cool. colleges and universities to teach, to teach black yes, conservatives. I'm, I'm oh. saying, Pastor, if you build colleges and universities and educate and elevate black people, they will no longer go to those doggone churches. Ooh. Mm. Say that again. And they will live those neighborhoods. So they have to keep you where you are and take your money. They live someplace else. Uh, but they got to serve you, make you comfortable in your poverty, comfortable in your crime, comfortable in your sin. They got to make you comfortable there to keep feeding them. My God. Dr. Weaver, I'm telling you, I love you, sir, in Christ. And we're going to get down to St. Louis um, really soon. That'd Definitely. Be great. We're gonna get down there. We love you. And we love um, also our, our spiritual mother there, uh, Mother Mason. Hey, man, thank you. Dr. Uh, Mason for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Hey, stay right or be left. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Love you, doctor. And we're going to have him back again here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And that was Dr. Clarence A. Mason, world-renowned black conservative scholar, author, and contributor writer for the World Net Daily there in Washington, D.C. We thank God that you, all of you, uh, our partners around the world, took an opportunity, um, the time out of your busy schedule, to be with us tonight on this very special Friday night of Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And we will be back on Monday. Back with us on Monday. This coming Monday is Remember St. Garcia, he was with us a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the great contest before in heaven for God. Uh, Professor Jim Garcia will be back with us uh, on Monday. Glory to God. He'll be back with us on Monday the 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, again, Dr. Jim Garcia will be back with us on Monday at 9 p.m. Only here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Have a wonderful weekend in the Lord. We are raised to become the consciousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see you next time on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio.
There are a lot of great places to visit during the summer. The beaches at the shore are amazing. The mountains are incredible, and the lakes are the greatest. But this year, my first stop was somewhere else, my local Volkswagen dealer. I got a terrific deal on a new Jetta. And those available features like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitor, and front assist are great to have in summer traffic. Now I think I'll head out to some of my favorite summer destinations. Like, all of them. Test drive the Volkswagen Jetta this summer at your local Volkswagen dealer. I love the summer. There's so much to do. Driving my new Volkswagen Jetta to the lake, driving it to the beach, driving it home after a weekend at the beach. See, I got a great deal from my local Volkswagen dealer. And with available features like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitor, and rear traffic alert, this Jetta is all about confidence. I think I'll drive it up to the mountains this weekend. I might even go hiking, if I have time. Test drive the Volkswagen Jetta this summer at your local Volkswagen dealer.